These are this afternoon's top stories. Reward of $10,000 offered for information into murder. Guyana celebrates International Youth Day and no bail for couple accused of trying to join IS. Good afternoon and welcome to Zarez's Midday Newscast. Today is Thursday, 13th August 2015. I'm Cal Barrage. In national news, the Federation's police force is again appealing to residents of St. Kitts and Nevis to report criminal activity to the various police stations. In its most recent attempt, comes via a release which reveals that a group of concerned individuals have posted a $10,000 reward for information regarding the killing of Nevision Charles Albert Myers. Myers was found dead in his home on the morning of August 7, 2015. Assistant Commissioner of Police for Crime Ian Creeley is quoted in the release as pleading to the general public to report criminal activity. The public is asked to call the Violent Crimes Unit at the Charlestown Police Station at 469-5254. Persons can also call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477. When the country's youth minister, Honorable Sean Richards, addressed the nation on International Youth Day, he said youth were in intense discussion on civil engagement and its real and perceived responsibilities. Minister Richards, while commenting on the theme, youth civic engagement, said such discussions must not only happen on International Youth Day. These media discussions must continue in our personal conversations and our homes. We must talk about individual and collective actions designed to identify and address issues of public concern. Each youth must ask him or herself, what can I do by myself or in a group to find and fix problems in my community or country. International Youth Day was celebrated on August 12th across the 193 member nations of the United Nations. The Nevis Culturama Committee is getting ready to officially bring down the curtains on its first 41st Culturama celebration. This week, Executive Director of the Culturama Secretariat, Antonio Liburd, revealed that the Culturama 41 prize-giving ceremony will be held on Saturday, August 15th at the Cultural Village in Charlestown. That event is scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. Meantime, the Culturama 41 World Match winner, the Odyssey Band, will make its first appearance since winning this year's title. The band has been booked to provide musical entertainment at the Cultural Village following Saturday's prize-giving ceremony. The staff at the Brimstone Hill National Park is getting ready for the August 29th and 30th Emancipation Concert and Festival. Cameron Gill, the park's general manager, stopped by our studio on Tuesday to give an update on the plan so far. He first gave an overview of the annual celebration. It grew out of the annual Emancipation Concert which a few years ago we expanded into a concert and a festival. The fair concert is of course the highlight and the climax of everything. Mm -hmm. We expanded it beyond that into a greater celebration of our emancipation, so both reflection and celebration. The first event is dubbed Family Evening and will begin at 4 p.m. on Saturday, 29th August. And so this is aimed at families, clubs, groups of friends, church groups, etc. So it could be you and your family, it could be you and a group of partners you hang out with. It could be a sports club or a club, say, with, at, with, with the place where you work. Come up for an afternoon of fun, bring a picnic back blanket, bring a refreshment, etc. And there will be, we'll have games available, miniature football, giant dominoes, giant checkers. And it sounds weird that we've shrunk in the football and we've blown up the domino and checkers, but come out and have fun. An emancipation film show will also form part of a Saturday's event. Gill revealed that the Golden Globe and Oscar winning film Selma has been identified for that evening. From Lev Neymontil, there will be the Emancipation Book and Wine Fair in collaboration with the University of West Indies Open Campus and Dr. Chatterton's Greenland's Books and Things. This will take place at the Infantry Officers' Quarters on the parade level. We will be featuring books by local and Caribbean authors. These will be on display and on sale. Also, we will have locally made wines on display and on sale, and you can purchase your wines either by the glass or by the bottle. Then from 2 p.m. until, there will be a display and sale of local foods by Sandy Point Agricultural Cooperative Society, 
and this will include the ever popular ITAL, which I always make sure I get, get at least one or two plates of. Sunday's event will also feature an emancipation lecture, which will be delivered by Irvin Welsh. The Emancipation Concert and Festival will be held under the theme, I Have a Dream, and My Dream is Freedom and Equality. Regionally, Guyana joined countries around the world to celebrate International Youth Day on August 12th. Here's that story. Scores of young people from across the country today participated in the International Youth Day organized by the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, Department of Youth, Sport and Culture. Coordinator of Adolescent with the Ministry of Public Health said the activities organized were geared to bring to light the issues affecting young people. This year's activity is being celebrated under the theme Youth Civic Engagement, acknowledging that youth must be a part of the change process that is occurring in every country, in every well, at the community level, at the country level, and worldwide. So we had um, we have a day of activities. We started off with a walk which started at Parliament buildings. The significance of starting at Parliament buildings is that that's where policies are made, national policies are made. So we've walked from um, Parliament buildings up here to the National Cultural Centre. At the Cultural Centre Tarmac, the young people participated in a number of activities which allowed them to display their talents. Where we will give youth an opportunity to sign up in um, volunteerism activities, job activities, training activities, encouraging their involvement. Because, you know, for too long, youths have not been involved. Now is not the age of indifference and, and youth being cast aside. Now is the time for youth involvement. Several government functionaries and representatives of various organizations were on hand to meet with the young people. Reporting for Capital News, I for Wharton. Former National Security Minister Guy Myers is calling on St. Lucians to protest a recent amendment to the Motor Vehicles and Road Traffic Act. The new legislation requires drivers to be able to present their licenses to traffic officers on demand or face more than three months imprisonment. Sarah Peter tells us more in this report. Draconian and dangerous. That's how former National Security Minister Guy Mayers has described a recent change to the Motor Vehicles and Road Traffic Act. One of the changes includes the implementation of legislation which requires a driver to produce his or her driver's license immediately upon request. A person who contravenes this law is liable to a fine of $1,000, three months in jail or both. Solutions need to protest this. You need to protest it in the strongest possible way because this has no place in St. Lucian society at this time. Let us, let us empower the police by giving them the tools that they need to ensure that persons who are not licensed to drive are not on the road creating a menace. Let us ensure that put the vehicles that are not insured are not on the road. But by jailing people or fining them $1,000 just because they don't have the documents on their person when you stop them is not going to solve the problem. Mayor says it is ridiculous that the latitude to produce documents within 48 hours is no longer applicable. And instead of improving on the relationship between the police and the citizens, you're now telling people you're going to jail or you can go to jail if you are found without your... Not that you have, you, you have not committed any crime by not having your driver's license, in my opinion. But now that's what the law says. If you don't have it on your person when the police stop you, they can send you to jail or they can arrest you and charge you just for not having your driver's license. That, in my opinion, is madness. The new legislation indicates on every occasion a person who drives a motor vehicle or trailer must be in possession of his or her valid driver's license immediately upon request. For the DBS News World, I am Sarah Peter. A young Mississippi couple charged with attempting to join the Islamic State were held without bail pending federal grand jury action on the charges. Here's more. Leonce Young and his wife had no comment for reporters after a hearing ended with a U.S. magistrate judge denying bond for their 20-year-old daughter. Jalen Young and Muhammad Daklala faced charges of conspiring to join the Islamic State group after they were arrested at a Mississippi airport Saturday. Her father is a longtime police officer in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Daklala worshipped at this Islamic center in Starkville, Mississippi, where his father is the longtime imam. In no way were their views radical. Uh, they were what you would expect um, uh, 
devout Muslim family to feel like. Nice kid, uh, super smart, super intelligent, uh, always very polite. During the hearing, a prosecutor likened the pair to Boston Marathon bomber Johar Sarnaev, saying the pair espoused extremist ideology and could commit violence unless they remain jailed. So I, I can't talk about it. Young's lawyer isn't anyway. commenting. But I, I appreciate y'all asking, but I just can't. Federal court personnel recommended a pretrial release. In the end, however, the U.S. magistrate judge sided with the prosecutors. Ned Barker, the Associated Press. Authorities are looking into claims that Gads tried to beat information out of other inmates who remained locked up as the three-week-long manhunt for prisoner escapees Richard Matt and David Sweat went on outside. NBC's Justice Correspondent Pete Williams reports. These new allegations are reported tonight by the New York Times, which says prison guards pressured dozens of inmates seeking details of the escape and beat some of them. The Times story quotes two inmates. One says he was handcuffed, taken to a broom closet, lifted up by the throat, and punched in the ribs and stomach. Another quoted by the paper says a plastic bag was tied around his neck during an interrogation and tightened until he passed out. The Times says dozens of inmates have complained to an organization that provides legal services. In response, the New York Department of Correction says in a statement tonight that the allegations have been under investigation for several weeks and that instances of abuse against inmates will be punished. Two inmates, Richard Matt and David Sweat, escaped from the prison in June. Governor Andrew Cuomo visited officials in the prison the day after the breakout. Sweat was recaptured after a three-week manhunt. Matt was shot and killed. On Tuesday, Amnesty International approved a controversial policy to endorse a decriminalization of the sex trade, rejecting complaints from some women's rights groups who say it is tantamount to advocating the legalization of pimping and brothel owning. At its decision-making forum in Dublin, the Human Rights Watchdog approved the resolution to recommend full decriminalization of all aspects of consensual sex work. It argues its research suggests decriminalization is the best way to defend sex workers' human rights. Advanced word of the amnesty policy sparked opposition from some women's group who argued that the human rights organization has made a serious mistake. Taking a look at the weather. Today will be partly sunny with a chance of brief afternoon showers. Tonight is expected to be partly cloudy with a slight chance of showers. Seas are moderate with heights up to 4 feet. Temperatures should peak at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Sunset this evening will be at 6.38 p.m. while sunrise tomorrow will be at 5.53 a.m. That brings us to the end of the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Join us this evening for these stories and more in detail. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kyla Barrage.